One of the main differences between Lagrangian mechanics and Hamiltonian mechanics is the way that you can transform between coordinates. And coordinate transformations have been very important in the kind of work we've already done. One of the reasons Lagrangian mechanics has been so useful is that we can choose our coordinates to match our problem exactly, to match particular symmetries or, or notions of constraints in our problem, and the dynamics work out naturally in terms of those coordinates. Changing coordinate frames and changing coordinates in general is actually very important to the whole notion of symmetries. And so we're going to look at changing coordinates first in Lagrangian mechanics and then in Hamiltonian mechanics. So let's begin with discussing point transformations in Lagrangian mechanics. If we have a set of coordinates Q that describe our entire system, and we have another set of coordinates, capital Q, that also describe our entire system, then there must be some relationship between any particular configuration described by a particular set of Q, little Qs or a particular set of big Qs. In other words, there must be some function that maps the big Qs to the little Qs, like this. We don't know anything about this function, but it must exist if both of these coordinates are sound coordinate choices. Now, Hamilton's principle tells us that the integral of the Lagrangian, which is a function either of all the little Qs or the big Qs, is minimized. This is also true for the big Q coordinates. Now, this is L dash and not L, because these two Lagrangians are actually different functions. They're different functions because for the same numbers of Q, little Qs and big Qs, we're actually talking about completely different system configurations. And what we want is these two Lagrangians to give the same number when they describe the same system configuration. And what I mean by that is that the function L dash for the big Qs is equal to the function L, where L is describing exactly the same configuration here, which means the Qs obey these functions up here. And the derivatives, we have to take the total derivative of these functions. Let's remind ourselves of a point transformation we did not too long ago when we were discussing a rotating uniform sphere and motion on that sphere. And of course, because it was a, a rotating sphere around an axis, we thought polar coordinates is the way to go. And so instead of going from Cartesians, which was sort of z, x, and y, we went to polar coordinates, and the standard polar coordinates are simply, well, we had a constant radius. Angle from the z-axis is theta, and the angle around the rotating axis is phi. And we went into a rotating frame, so we're actually thinking about relative to the surface of the planet itself. And then what we did, of course, is we calculated the derivatives of this. And then we slowly worked out that our original Lagrangian, which we knew well in Cartesians, we calculated what it was in the polar coordinates. So the Lagrangian is a scalar, but it's the same scalar in any coordinate system. Now one of the really important things to talk about when we're talking about transformations between coordinate systems is the possibility of smooth transformations between coordinate systems, which means we need to introduce the idea of families of point transformations. By which I mean point transformations just as we had above, except now they depend on some extra parameter. So my transformation between my little Qs and my big Qs, say, depend not just on the big Qs, but also on one or more parameters. So I'll call that S1 up to SK, and then all these. Now we've got lots of very simple examples of that. One very simple example might be a translation. In one dimension, you might have a coordinate Q, and your big Q might just be a translated part of that. And the amount that you translate could be a function of S. So if I translate S equals zero, I've made the identity transformation. If I translate one meter, then I've moved all my coordinates one meter over. Another obvious one, of course, are rotations. So I might have two coordinates, Q1 and Q2 and I might rotate them. And my rotation might depend on some parameter, theta in this case. And so this would be a one parameter, so k would be one, and that parameter would be theta. And I'd be rotating uh, and doing a transformation therefore in my two-dimensional space. Okay, so we've got families of point transformations.